got here is a situation. Now I replaced this quarter panel section down in this area here. And then at one time this quarter panel was actually wrecked. So when I grinded it down, ground it down to bare metal, this was full of Bondo up in here. So what we got is we got a situation of a quarter panel that needs to be repaired, which I'm almost done doing that. It had major rust down here. Where's that piece of metal? Did you throw it away? No, it's back up front. Can you grab it, please? Assistant guy. Yeah. Let me see that. So here's our panel right here that I replaced. Um, you can see that it was very rusted out and rotted. Okay. Another thing that we got here is this car is completely restored. It's like a brand new car. That's why you see all this plastic here. So we're getting down to the last final coat of Bondo. And on this quarter panel, all right, this quarter panel is not flat. It looks like that in the camera, but it's not. It, it's actually curved like this. All right. So it's curved on the back side of it, but when we get up to the front here, it's more flat. Now it's got, it's got a little bit of a curve, but not as much as the back. And another thing we got is this section right in here where the bumper sits has to be uniform. And then we got this corner that rolls around here as well. We got a sharp edge down here, which we don't really have to worry about because like I said, I replaced this all the way up to right here. All right. And then, what we got to do is get this in primer. So we're on our final coat of Bondo, filler, whatever you want to call it. Um, it took me three swipes to get it to where it is now. And what I want to do is I want to get this blocked out as straight as possible because if you rub your hand like this, you can't see it. You start to feel the imperfections. Can you come over here, nine, four, zero, and do that with your hand? Where's the high and low spots? Can you feel that? Okay, there's a high spot right here. It feels like it's a little boat out here, but then when you come, okay, there's another one. Okay, so what we got, and when you feel your Bondo for the final touch, you want to use your whole hand just like this, and you want to rub it. All right, now a lot of people wear cotton gloves when they do that. You can feel it a lot better, but what's that? Low spot. No, there's not a low spot there. There's a high spot right here. So. You can see there's a lot of controversy going on. Thank you. That's all we need. I'm still we're done. Still we're rubbing. done. I'm rubbing it out, baby. Okay, we're done. I'm rubbing it out, baby. So what I'm trying to get at here is you get a lot of controversy, and you really can't find your highs and lows, and all you're doing is block sanding it out, and, and then you, find, you block too much out, and then this is too high, and this is too low, and over here is this way. And this is on a big piece of section here, which is approximately, I would say that's almost four and a half feet long. Yep. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to block this out and get all those high spots out by hand. That's the only way this is going to happen. If you use an air file on this or a DA sander or a jitterbug sander, the only thing you're going to do is make it worse. When you get to your final stage of Bondo, you want to use a hand sander. Welcome to... DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more.
going to take some nice, cheap, inexpensive 69 cent spray paint, flat black. We're going to go ahead and put a guide coat on this. Okay? And what the guide coat is going to be used for is it's going to tell us that we have literally sanded that whole section. Okay? This is very important. Alright? It's not going to hurt anything. It will not interrupt with you putting any uh, primer on it or anything. Okay? This is a guide coat that we actually are putting on here to find our high and low spots. What? You, you want to make sure it's flat and not gloss because of why. What are you talking about? Your um, guide coat. Flat paint. gloss what? Yeah. Your, your flat gloss paint. Okay, 940 is giving us an answer here. Okay, he's actually saying it's better to use flat paint instead of gloss because if you use gloss, your paper will gum up more. Okay, thank you. Tell him something. Tell him now. No, that's cool, No, go ahead. No. You know all about it. You fucking do it. I don't fucking know. All I know is that I'm keeping it fucking straight over here. Just like this quarter panel over here. It's about to be looking fucking straight. Straighter than the brim on my hat. And uh, as soon as my friend Pete gets done with it, it might be a fucking nice um, sail panel, as I would say. Like a fucking sailboat. Some bitch is about eight feet long. Look at that. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, dude. Okay, hold those. Okay, now that we've let our guide coat go ahead and dry on our final coat of Bondo, now I want to go ahead and explain something to everybody. After I swiped the final coat on there, I went ahead and took my air file with 36 grit. And anybody that doesn't know what an air file is, this is an air file. I went ahead and blocked it out to get that skim coat off because every time you put Bondo on it, it gets this real shiny skim coat that you have to get off of there. So I went ahead and used 36 grit to knock that off. Then I went ahead and air filed it with 80 grit. Okay. Learning how to use this is one of the most important things you can do in the body shop industry to do your body work properly. Uh, we'll be back with this tool later because I'm going to go through every single tool that I got and show you how to use them right to make sure that you're doing a, a sufficient job and an efficient job all in one. So back to what we were talking about. We have gotten to the stage where we have to do our final block sanding. And the only way you're going to properly do that right is by hand. Now the blocks that I use are a set of blocks that you can purchase which are very high quality if Clown could give me the small one. Okay. And this is uh, the block that I'm talking about right here. Anybody that wants to know what this set of blocks is, you can call me or text me or whatever you got to do. Not text, but message me. And I will tell you, I am not going to advertise for this company because they're not giving me a free set of blocks. Why should I advertise for these people when they're not doing anything for me? Now, if my viewers out there want to know what these are, I'll be glad to tell you, but I am not making a video specifically on this brand of blocks, all right, for the company that makes them, unless they plan on doing something for me, which they're not. They're not fucking going to do it. They're your brand, dude. Okay. I ought to make some. I could probably sell them with you my name on it. You did make some. You made some, dude. So, the block that I have here, this is a 24-incher, I believe. Where's my tape measure? And when you buy this set of blocks, this is the biggest block that you can get in the set. So we're going to go ahead and measure that out. I don't remember what it is. Okay, it's a 16 incher. This is a good block to use for this due to the fact that it's a big block. And that is what we're trying to do here. We need a big block, all right, that covers a lot of surface. So when we sand that down, it's basically ironing the bondo. Does that make sense? All right, you got to put your, your mind into a sense of what you do commonly everyday thing. And when you're sanding that bondo down, you're actually ironing it. So pretend this is your iron, all right, and this is the shirt that you're ironing, and you got to get those wrinkles out. All right, that's what makes it real simple, is you got to put your state of mind into something that's an everyday common thing. We also have another block here, and Clown Hat went ahead and measured that. What was the length on this? 30. Okay, 
This is the 30 block here, the big 30-incher, 30, 30 okay? And this is the block that should be used on this particular type of car due to the fact that this quarter panel is seven and a half feet long. Now, when it comes time to block sand this out for primer, this is the block we're going to use because you can see how much area this thing covers. The problem you have with this is if you don't know how to use it right, you're just going to mess things up and waste a lot of sandpaper. And there's actually a way that you use this sander, okay, and the way that you use it is it's a two-handed job. Sometimes you even need a guy to right? put your arm in the middle. It's a two-handed job and you got to be able to know how to sand it. All right, if you notice what I'm sanding, I'm not going back and forth, I, I'm shaving it. See how I'm doing that? I'm doing a, a crisscross pattern here, okay? And then I would come over here like this, all right, and then I would go this route. So I'm shaving it like this instead of like that. We're trying to get it at both angles, all right, to break it down. So this sander here we're gonna use as well. Um, if you want to do it right, I hate to disappoint everybody, you're going to have to buy some tools to do it right. you got to have the right tools. That's all there is to it. Now, the paper that we're using is an 80 grit stick-on style paper. Alright, it comes in a nice roll. Alright, it's a roll in a box. Very inexpensive and works very, very well. Um, there is a difference in sandpaper qualities when you buy the sandpaper. But believe me, there's not that big of a difference, and for doing your work, it's better to go ahead and buy the cheaper brand that will save you money than to spend a lot of money for the name brand. So I'm going to start out with the 16 inch, and what I'm going to do, I want you to watch how I sand this. And what I'm watching for, I'm watching for my guide coat. Wherever the guide coat is left on, that's a low spot, and then wherever I take it off, that's a high spot. So we're going to take our 16 incher just like this, and I'm not going to sand straight across like that. All right, I'm going to concentrate on sanding at a crisscross pattern like this. And I want you to watch that. Now, normally I would use my dust mask. Can you hand that to me, please? Which I will be using my dust mask in a few minutes. This is very important. Alright, when you're doing this type of work, use your safety equipment. But right now, while I'm teaching you how to do this, i got to talk. So, we're not going to be using that at this minute. But I usually use this 99.9% .9 of the time. my 16 inch block and I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to go down. Do you see how I'm doing that? Yeah. I'm going forward and down all at one time. So we're starting way over here on the end and we're using our cross section cross cut sanding uh, application. So now that we have cross cut our pattern here, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and go to a different route and we're going to go ahead and do a two hand style cross cut. And when I'm saying two hand, I'm talking that I'm going to use both hands on it and what that's going to do, that's going to form, okay, because this is a flex block and it's going to form to our quarter panel. Now I noticed in this area right here that it's a little low and I notice all the way around it, it's high. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. That's telling me that the bondo's high here and also here. And then I see that there's a low spot here, all right, and that all this pry, all this bondo is looking real nice. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And I also notice right here there's a dark area, which is showing us that, that might be a high spot as well. So I'm going to concentrate on this area here, but I'm going to use both hands, and I'm going to really force at it now, as you can see. And I'm using my cross pattern. And then as we sand that, you can see this is disappearing. And now I want you to run your hand there where it was low. 
oh, and you yeah. can see that it's going away. All right. Because when we first did this, you said, hey, there's a low spot there. And I told you, no, it's, it's there's a high spot, spot here. Huh. Okay. So using both hands, all right, as you cross cut the bondo, okay, I'm pushing this way and up. You see how I'm doing that? And what I'm also doing, I'm taking my sanding block and I'm forming it to the quarter panel. Okay? Now, I'm feeling a high spot right in this area here. It feels good here, but right here there's a high spot. And if we notice, we got this section right here, which is our fender one. We don't want to ruin that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come from this angle now, and I'm going to go in to the fender lip. Do you see what I'm saying? And by doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be able to watch that fender lip because I've got to keep that curve. But i got to get this where it's all even. I, see, I feel a high spot right in this area, and I can see where I, have, I still have black paint. So I'm going to take my sander just like I was doing, and I'm going to cross cut it just like this. Until all the black paint is gone. And I can see now by feeling it, everything is feeling very smooth. Now the spot you're looking at right here, that's not black paint. That's Dynaglass, which is a filler, which is underneath the Bondo. All right? Remember I told you that this was wrecked seriously hard, and this section of the quarter panel should have been replaced, but the owner only wanted to replace the bottom of it. So we got to straighten all this back out because I removed it all and started over. So I'm just going to keep on cross-cutting my Bondo using both hands, just like you're watching me do, until all of my guide coat paint, or should I say 90% of it, is gone. It's all in the guide coat and your cross-cut sanding action. That's going to get the job done right. And now that I'm feeling it, I can see that I got a nice even curve. I don't have no high spots. There's a high spot right here. So I can feel that. Now I'm not going to put a guide coat on that because I can literally feel it with my hand. I'm going to take my sander one more time and I'm going to cross cut this area. What that's going to do, that's going to help me sand this area here, but leave this area alone. So it's real hard and meticulous that you pay attention and, and, and concentrate on what you're doing. So now I'm going to come down this way. And now... It's starting to feel very, very nice and even. I feel a little bit of a low spot right here, so I'm going to go ahead and sand just a little bit more of this, and then I'll sand some more down here to eliminate those two high spots to even all this out. I run my hand down it, it's feeling good in this area, but we still got a bit of a high spot right here. Okay, now that we have removed all the high spots, we've used our guide coat, we've done the best we can to get everything even and level, 
what we're going to do now is we're going to use our big 30 inch job which we're looking at right here and we're going to give it a nice good sweep over and what that'll do that will cover the whole area I'm going to go ahead and use the two hand method just like you're watching here and I'm going to use my cross cut sanding technique to make sure that it levels and smooths everything out And now we got a nice quarter panel that's been nice block sanded down, ironed out. Remember that word iron. And to go ahead and finish it off, I'm going to go ahead and use my half round. You can see that that's a teardrop sanding block. It's round. And I'm also going to use a very, very flexible block. All right. I actually made this block out of some uh, packing, some rubber packing inside when you buy a brand new hood or when you buy a brand new fender. And that's very economical as well. And I actually have a video online on DIY Auto School, YouTube channel DIY Auto School, how to make sanding blocks. Watch that. It's very, very uh, informative and will help you out a lot. So if we look at this section right here, this is where our fender lip is. Now, this fender actually gets a piece of chrome right here, but we want to follow this lip properly. So what I'm going to do, since this is an inside corner, I'm going to take my half round, and I'm just going to block that out, concentrating on the outside edges as I feather it out. Just like that, just to finish it. Always use your hand. Your hand is very important. All right? I'm still going to use my uh, teardrop block to get this edge right here. And I'm going to go ahead and block that edge very lightly. And what that's going to do, that's going to help me keep that square line that I need right here. It actually gets round on the bottom and it's square up on top, so we want to really watch that. Now the last and final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flex block here and I'm just going to sand the outside edges. And if you look right here, you can see where the Bondo buildup is right there. That's where this is going to come in to round that corner out and feather everything out properly. I'm going to go ahead and take my hard block using both hands to form to it just to get that down where I need it. So now we are almost ready. I'm not ready yet, but I'm almost ready. I'm going to show you why I'm not ready, but we are almost 99% ready to go ahead and prime this. The only reason that's stopping us is there's a little pinhole right here that I'm looking at, and I also have to clean my edges up around the edges with the DA sander, and then once that's done, this is ready to primer and paint. Now, I want to go ahead and stress to you that it's very important to hand sand your final coat of Bondo. That's what this whole video is about. Using the right blocks, the right tools to do the job the way that it's supposed to be done. So, if you don't have a set of these sanders and you want to do body work, get yourself a set because they are going to come in handy when you need them. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you how to do everything the proper way. Hopefully, you're watching and learning and you're going to do it right because if you aren't doing it right then you ain't doing it right and to do it right you have to do it right if you fuck this up don't get upset all you gotta do is add a little bit more bondo to it and start over all right everything always works out in the end always remember that no matter what you're doing in life in the end it all works out for the best once again this is pete over at diy auto school southwest rod and custom make sure you check out my other youtube channel SWRNC for other exciting videos and also please subscribe to my channel 
I'd really appreciate it. I need subscribers. And I also want the comments. If you are a YouTuber, please leave a comment. Comments are very important to me. I like to get reactions of what people are thinking and what people, other ideas out there that you might have to help get this done quicker or easier than I'm doing it. Because that's what comments are all about, is interacting with each other and, and getting the right answers so everybody can learn out there, not just you. We'll see you later. Take it easy. And hopefully you learned something from dry blocking, hand blocking your final Bondo coat and priming that quarter panel. That, my friend, was a big job. Another thing about this car I just want to let you know before we go, it's black. And it's a 1967 GTO and the car's in mint condition. So I really got to be on top of my game to have this done right. This is the kind of job that makes you nervous. You don't even want to fuck with it. But you're going to take it on because you're not a quitter. Being a quitter is a loser. Do not be a quitter. Always remember that. We'll see you later. showed you how to do that with the big blocks. What I'm doing now is I'm taking my polyester filler. This is not a Bondo. This is a very, very thin coat that you apply to your pinholes. You can go ahead and do this in two separate times. You can do it now if you can see them or you can wait until the car is primed and then do them on top of the primer. Um, using a polyester filler versus a Bondo for your small holes and your small imperfection is the only way to go. Uh, you can see that I overmixed it. This is some very good stuff. Certain people make different brands of it, but it's all the same thing and possibly comes from the same factory. Um, I'm going to tell you a little secret about Bondo. If uh, Clown Hack can bring the camera over here. This Bondo here, which I'm not going to advertise, and this Evercoat, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say Evercoat. It's not Evercoat. And this polyester fill that you're looking at here probably comes from the same factory that the fucking Bondo that sells for $89 a gallon and $65 a gallon does. If you take the regular Bondo such as this, and you can see that this is just Bondo, and you mix it with this, you are going to create a nice, filling, creamy Bondo mix that will flow out just like the $90 gallon shit. All right? It's bullshit that these companies scam you, all right, you, the consumer, and they make you buy shit that is so simple to go ahead and create yourself. Anyway, we ran into a problem over here, and this is another thing about working on these cars, all right, we found out that this car was not stripped down to bare metal. It had one layer of primer, it had black paint, then it had another layer of primer, and it had black paint on top of that. Now, I don't know if that's because this fender's been painted before over the top of it, because the rest of the car is immaculate. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. But this started out as a video of how to block sand your primer for, I mean, how to block sand your Bondo to apply primer. And I've already covered that, but I had to come back and explain why this is right here. Now, what I did is I took my DA sander, and this is how you would feather this area out. You would take your DA sander with 80 grit and then 180, and you'd feather that out to where when you rub your hand across it, you don't feel any imperfections of the lines. But we ran across this quarter panel that had a lot of paint buildup, and what we had to do is we had to take our polyester filler, which goes on very thin, and we had to go ahead and put a thin coat right across here 
where that line is. And if you look real close, you can see that line right here. I don't know if you can see it where my finger goes. Can you see that? Okay. And what that is, that's where I tried to feather it out with the DA sander. So what I got to do now is I went ahead and filled that in. When I sand that down, that's going to layer that and level everything out. That's another important factor when you're doing this because if you don't do that, when you go to paint the car, even though it looks like it's all leveled, you're going to see a line right here of where this paint is thicker than this. Now the only other option that you have by getting rid of that is basically stripping that quarter panel down to bare metal. We don't want to do that. Another thing that I found out, if you come over here, you can see that this is not clear coated. All right, um, This is actually acrylic enamel paint. So this car is a single stage urethane or acrylic enamel. Um, when you DA sand it and you get black dust or red, green, purple, whatever your color is of your car, then that's telling you that it doesn't have a clear coat on it. It's a single stage paint. If you sand it and you get white dust, that's going to tell you that that's clear coat you're sanding. That's another thing you got to watch out for. Now, we got lucky on this line here, and if you come over here and look at that, you can see what I'm talking about by layers. Uh, can you get the camera right here? You can see there's a layer, there's a black, there's a primer, and a black. Do you see that? That creates a situation. And another problem that we might have when we put our primer on there is this edge right here that I am zooming in on might blister and crackle. So it's very important that you use a urethane 2K primer when priming your quarter panel or whatever you're working on when you are overlapping the primer onto the paint. It's very important that you use 2K primer on a situation like this necessarily and, and dr dramatically, drastically using that. Um, we also found out right here, look at that, feel your finger right there. We got to put some more Bondo on that. Can you tell me why? Because it's low right here. There's a low right spot there, and a low right spot. There. Okay, we didn't know that was there until we blocked it out. So I got to fix that. And I think I'm going to go ahead and get on that. Uh, when we come back, we're going to go ahead and put this baby in primer and see what it looks like. And hopefully it came out to be a good job. Big job, good job. It's a job. And you just got to take your time. And you got to uh, neutral the situation. Use them big long blocks to do what you got to do to sand it out and make it flat. All right, now that our Evercoat has, has dried to uh, consistency where I can sand it, uh, I'm going to finish this out here and I'm going to show you what we're talking about by feathering that out. Um, very important situation here, especially when you got layers. Okay, layers of paint is a bad situation when it comes to priming. I don't care how much primer you put on it, you'll never be able to fill the layers in to a consistency of being flush and perfect, especially on a classic car like this that we're working on now. So let me go ahead and get that. Okay. Now, so what I've done here is I went ahead and took my rubber block all right, now this is a different rubber block. This is a solid rubber block, nice and flat, heavy, and it doesn't uh, flex. This is actually an old school block. You could still purchase these blocks, but I don't know if they're as good as these ones. And this was before stick on paper came out. What you would do is take your piece of paper, your file paper, and then if you notice right there, it's got little nails. You would stick it down, fold it over, stick it down. So these are very good blocks. This block right here weighs about probably about a pound, three quarters of a pound to a pound. So it's a real nice block to use. So what I'm going to do is take my block with my 80 grit, all right, and then I'm just going to lightly sand it. I'm going to let the weight of the block do the sanding because all I'm doing is filling in this layer here, these layers of this paint. And we want to make sure that everything's feathered out and looks really uniform and complete. And now if you look at this area right here, you can see where the paint line comes up where the layers start to uh, show. So we're just letting the weight of the block, remember I told you this is a heavy block, 
And you can see that I'm not pushing on it, I'm just barely sanding it, and I'm just letting it feather itself out using the block as a tool. And now what we've done, we went ahead and feathered this edge out where we had all them layers of different paint. And when we prime this, what's going to happen, it's going to be nice and flat. So when you get down here and look down at it like this, do you see what I'm saying? You won't be able to see different layers or where we actually cut it off to work on it. Now this area here was a little bit unpredictable, and when I say that, it was showing a little black dot right here. And usually when you're down to bare metal and you see round circles, that's telling you that that's a low spot. But when you ran your hand across it, it really didn't feel like a low spot. It felt like it was flat. But once I came over here, like almost an inch, half an inch away from it, it felt like it was low there, and then it was low over here. So what I did, and this is a very crucial job in itself, because this Bondo here is actually finished. So when we sand this, we want to concentrate, using this block again, we want to concentrate on this area only. We don't want to sand the, out, sand the outside edges. We want to concentrate on staying in the center of it, and then once we get to our final finish stage, then we can feather this out. So I'm going to take my block with 80 grit, and you can see that I'm staying in the center of it, staying away from the edges, because I don't want to sand that finished Bondo until I really get down to where I need to go with it. And this is something else I need to show you about this is you can see where the Bondo is built up. When you start to get that type of a build up on your sandpaper, it's time to remove it and get a new piece. Because when you have build up on your sandpaper, what that's going to do, it's going to cut a groove into the Bondo. So always keep your sandpaper clean. Clean that edge up there, get it nice and feathered out. And now you can see that this is starting to look like a finished product. So I still got this edge here and this edge here to get. What I'll do now is I'll start sanding it down closer to feather all this in. start feathering it out. Alright, I'm going to go past the Bondo as I'm sanding. But you see how far I'm going past it now, and I'm using my cross pattern once again to sand it down. The way that you can tell it's feathered out is it starts disappearing. It starts showing a ghost effect. When you see real sharp edges such as this right here, you know that that still needs feathered out because there's a lip there. But if you look right here, you can see how it has a ghost effect to it where it's feathered out. We'll take our block, and we're just letting the block do the weight. And you can see how I'm going in different patterns, and I'm overlapping it until it goes away. And now, that low spot, high spot, whatever was here, it's gone, and we have feathered this area into this area by taking this block, this heavy rubber block, and letting the block do the work for us in a nice, light, fashionable way. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and repeat my process on the little pinhole action that we had, just randomly, lightly blocking it until it goes away. Because we did have some pinholes in this area. And you'll see the Bondo disappearing. Alright, keep it a wide, nice, crisscross pattern sand job. All you want to do is sand it down to where the pinholes are filled in. So i got to finish this lip right here. I'm going to repeat my process here. And I'm also going to go ahead and clean this up right here. Uh, we'll go ahead and do that. If you remember correctly, we had a couple little high spots here. I'm still using my hard rubber block. Alright, I'm letting the block do the work. I'm not doing it. I'm not pushing on the block. 
okay? So sometimes these old school heavy rubber blocks, all right, like you see right here, is a very good tool to have. Okay, so now that we're done sanding it, that is our final sand job. If uh, 94 Clown Hat SWRNC Dylan guy can come over here and show us what you're going to do here. Um, can you show me the bottle, please? What we got here is rubbing alcohol. This is your typical rubbing alcohol. What we're going to do, we're going to clean our bonded area and our metal down with rubbing alcohol. That's going to secure us that this is a 100% clean, free, dust-free area that we're going to prime because we want that primer to go on nice and slick and smooth. And this is going to help us block sand the primer because what it's going to do, it's going to give us a nice finish. All right, if you just blow it off and then prime it, uh, you're going to notice that you're going to get orange peel. It's going to be kind of a rough finish on there, and it's going to take more sanding. By using our rubbing alcohol on the Bondo, letting it dry, it's going to go ahead and give us a nice smooth finish, uh, minimal orange peel, and also an uh, uh, easy situation to say we're almost fucking done. Good thing about wiping this down with a towel also as well will help you find out where your lows and high spots are. Even though you are about to prime it, you're doing a lot of body work. Uh, before you do put the primer on, like you said, when you do wipe this off with alcohol, you really do get a real good feel of uh, what could be high or what could be low. Uh, like I said, when you use your hand, you get a little vibration and it's not really as good as if you use a cloth towel or some sort of a wipe ball and you get really slid on it really good and you can find out all the little imperfections you can with okay. a towel. It's a lot easier, so just a little DIY tip right there. Thank you, Clown Hat 940, keeping it straight guy. Okay, we're now ready to go ahead and put a coat of primer on this. Hopefully it's gonna come out nice. Let's see what happens. finished priming this vehicle it is now ready for block sanding um, I just got done putting the final coat of primer on it and it's still a little bit wet I want to walk through it here I want to show you you can follow the sheen I want to show you how straight that came out um, if you see anything that looks like a ripple it's not a ripple what it is it's my spray gun that splattered as I was painting it because the primer was so thick but I want you to get a good angle at that and see how straight that came out that's that, that really came out good. I'm really satisfied with the bodywork and I'm happy with it. And the reason it came out that good is because I took my time and I hand sanded that using my block technique in breaking down the area that was full of Bondo and, and neutering the situation using my guide coat just like I showed you. And also um, doing my cross pattern sanding, my crisscross sanding pattern that I used. I went ahead and uh, uh, applied that type of sanding. So that's what you get. That's what's going on right here. This car is ready for a little bit of block sanding action, wet sanding. We might have to spot prime it. But other than that, it's ready. It's a done deal and almost ready for paint. If you uh, are spraying something like that I and mean, you don't want a hard line, can yeah. you take can you take the paper off when it's wet as long as you're really careful so it kind of flows no, out? No, that doesn't bit. do nothing, dude. Okay. What is that gonna do? Well, I, sometimes. Well, what's that gonna do? Well, like whenever you're it's not gonna do nothing. Like when you're painting a car. It's not gonna do nothing. I was just curious. It's not gonna do nothing, dude. Okay. You're still gonna have a line there unless you take your finger and you go, ooh, looky here. I'm ooh, flattening wow. the line out when the fucking primer's wet. Okay. I was just curious. That's why you fold your paper up like I did here. See how the paper's folded? It gives it a, a, a soft line instead of a hard definition line. It looks pretty damn How does it look? It looks pretty fucking good. 
A lot of fucking work there. A lot of work. We got a little bit of block sanding over here in this area. Yeah, Need some that's, that's action. Good. But you know, other than that, whoopee wowie wow. Yeah, that's it's nice. got a nice sheen to it. Yeah, I like the way that it looks. Came out really straight. Look at that. All it needs is about to wait, what, 20 minutes and guide coat it? Yeah, can you go ahead and guide coat it. Look how straight that is. You can see the sheen. Dude, yeah, you as can. As I put the camera right here, and you can see how straight it is going down it. I don't see no ripples. I don't see no wobbles. I don't see nothing of any imperfection at all. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete over here at DIY Auto School. Showing you important lessons and highly secretable tech tips of how to fix your situations and do it right. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Subscriptions are very important. I need all the support I can get. And also, please leave comments. Interact with my friend Pete. Show your support by leaving a comment. If you got other suggestions on how to do this type of work, leave a comment. Let people know that you're here to help them like I'm here to help you. If you don't like the way that I did something, tell me to fuck off in a comment. I don't give a shit. Say something. Don't be a closet clown. We'll see you later. Closet clown? Is that funny? Yeah. Why is that funny, dude? Oh, just nothing. <laughs> No. Just people hiding. Just people hiding behind the fucking internet. That's that's yeah. all, dude. Yeah, no, a lot no. of that shit going on. That's here. Yeah, I'm sure. just, you know, just not over here. No. We ain't fucking hiding nothing. No. All right. You see, I even make videos for the owners of vehicles to watch them to show them that I'm doing a perfect fucking job on their car. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. I mean, I could slap that together. I could just fill it with Bondo and say, "Fuck off." There's your car, and they'd never know the difference because if you're a good body man, a good Bondo spreader and you know how to grind and sand and you know paint you can make that look like a perfect job but no i take my time to do it right it looks good man get the guide coat put a fucking guide coat on it let's get get to work here make sure you shake that shit up good then go get another fucking can square guys straight at fucking dude damn it So now that we painted our quarter panel, you can see that it came out really, really nice. Block sanding that Bondo to the perfection of getting it all squared out and ironed. Remember, I used the word iron. All right, hand blocking that, using the right blocks, and taking your time really pays off in the long run. Uh, the quarter panel came out, I would say, 85%, 90%. I'm not going to say that it's flawless like brand fucking new, but I can tell you one thing. This was a very, very big job, seven and a half foot quarter panel right here. Major, major construction. Um, the whole quarter panel should have been replaced. That should have been a quarter panel that we replaced the whole thing on. We didn't realize that this was wrecked. We didn't know it until we grinded all the Bondo out of it. But uh, we hammer and dollied it out. We uh, eliminated 95% of the Bondo on it. We replaced the lower uh, quarter panel section down here that's all been replaced brand new and we went ahead and used our blocks to get our bondo squared up so we'd have a nice straight quarter panel it's an easy situation if you take your time taking your time is the most important time that you'll ever have on your hands because time is always on your side when it comes to doing something like this don't slop it don't rush it don't over exaggerate it just take your time, use the proper tools, and you should have good results such as this. It's a situation that says you've got to get off your ass and get her done. You aren't going to get anything done sitting down being a lazy ass in life. Do something with yourself. Wake up and realize you're a human being that lives in the world that I live in. You're just like me. Everybody is born with a brain. It all depends on how you use that fucking brain to get down the fucking road and do something. Have pride in what you do and have a little bit of common sense and, and, and positive attitude and it'll go a long way, buddy. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't sit there moping and groping. 
Don't fucking do it. It's not good for your health. It's not good for you. And it doesn't get you nowhere but depressed. My friend Pete, your friend Pete, DIY Auto School. Please subscribe to my channel. I need the subscribers to subscribe. I need comments. Good comments, bad comments. I don't give a shit what the fuck comment it is. Put a comment down below. Let me know how you feel. Let me know if I'm doing my job to keep you satisfied, to keep you learning, to keep me teaching, and to keep me awake in situations like this that says, motherfucker. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.